Over 7 million people live in the Houston, Texas area, and that makes it the fifth largest metro area here in America. But yet, this city still hasn't had a full-scale park in the area since Six Flags Astor Road closed down in 2005. I'm going to share 10 reasons why Houston needs a theme park and then give my predictions on what the park would look like and what kinds of rides and roller coasters it would have if the city would ever get another park. Oh, and of course, I will also tell you what theme park operator that I can see coming in and building a park if this would ever happen. Now, I personally feel as if Six Flags should have never closed down Astroworld, and you're going to get more of my thoughts on that when I release my Astroworld video here soon. The Houston area is in a dire need of a new theme park and roller coasters. You have the Grand Texas Theme Park Project, but will we ever see the light at the end of that tunnel? Sadly, I personally think that project will never come to life. The Houston area does have Kima Boardwalk and Pleasure Pier, and while these two small amusement parks are really nice and fun, they don't offer what a large-scale park would. After you hear my 10 reasons why Houston needs a theme park, please share in the comments if you think of any other reasons why Houston needs a theme park. The first on the list is the climate. The weather in Houston is pretty much perfect. High of the mid-60s during December through February, with lows hovering around 45 degrees at night. So if the Houston area would ever get a new park, then it would be able to stay open all 12 months throughout the year if the park wanted to. Plenty of land. Now obviously there will be no room for a theme park built near the city, but once you travel around 15 to 20 miles outside of downtown Houston, you start to have more land available for a project of this size. Population. In 2019, there are over 7 million people living in the Houston metro area. While 7 million people is enough of a reason to warrant a theme park in the area, it's the 19% increase of population since 2010 that has to be very intriguing for theme park chains. And here's a fun fact, that's the highest increase among the top 20 metro areas here in the United States. Thrills. If you take a look at Kima and Pleasure Pier, they both offer a thrill coaster. I think if Houston would ever get a park again, then it should heavily rely on thrill rides. Astroworld. When Houston's 57-acre park closed down forever after 37 years of operation, the park consisted of 12 different roller coasters, dozens of rides and attractions, and a water park. Astroworld was still profitable even during the rougher years. Six Flags said that the main reason why Six Flags closed Astroworld was due to the parking situation of the nearby, newly built Reliant Stadium where the Houston Texans play football. And if we get this video to 500 likes, then I will release my What If Six Flags Asteroid Never Closed ride predictions from 2006 through 2020. Space Center Houston Houston, we have a problem. You know that famous quote that came from the movie Apollo 13? Well, the reason why is because NASA's mission control is located at the Space Center Houston. So if Houston would ever get a new theme park, then hopefully the park would feature a space theme to cross-promote each attraction. Tourists 22 million people visit the Houston area each year. Plus each year, over 7 million people visit the Galveston Beach area as well. So there's a ton of people that this potential park could reach. Competition. Kima Boardwalk is home to the awesome Gravity Group wooden coaster called the Boardwalk Bullet. Then 26 miles away is Galveston's Island Historical Pleasure Pier. And this park is home to Iron Shark, which is a Gerstlauer Eurofighter 380. These two small pay-as-you-play parks have done overall very well. But I think the nearby locals are looking for something that provides a little bit more thrill. Nearby water parks. The Houston area is home to some great water parks. The three largest ones are Typhoon Texas, Hurricane Harbor Splashtown, and of course, the Cedar Fair now owned Schlitterbahn Galveston. And the final reason is because everything is bigger in Texas. The saying that everything is bigger in Texas likely originated as a reference to the enormity of the state's geographical area. In terms of square miles, Texas is second to only Alaska in size, and it's the largest of the contiguous 48 states. So the saying everything is bigger in Texas is great for marketing purposes. So before I share what type of rides and roller coasters that I can see a new park in Houston would offer, I wanted to share my crazy wild thought with you. Now I'm pretty sure that it would never happen, but since 2018, Six Flags owns the leasing rights to Hurricane Harbor Splashtown, which is located just north of downtown Houston. This water park is one of the best water parks in the nation, and if you check out Google Maps, there's a ton of land that runs right next to the park. Now what I don't know is if Six Flags or Premier Parks owns this land, and if the land is zoned for this crazy thought. But what if, in a perfect world, Six Flags would build a brand new park adjacent to Splashtown? Sure, the land won't allow for a massive park, but you could fit a park there around the size of Discovery Kingdom. And here are the measurements to see if this size of park would fit or not. The blue line is Discovery Kingdom's width. Now the green line represents the length. 
And as you can see, a smaller park without animal exhibits would fit perfectly here. They can even have room for more parking spaces, obviously. What you have now is two great parks right next to each other, and it's clearly obvious that Six Flags regrets closing Astroworld. Why? Let's go back to that magic number. 7 million people that live in the Houston area. So thoughts on my crazy idea? Please share them in the comments. Now let's talk about what rides and roller coasters for a park in Houston that would be located most likely somewhere else in the area. Since it's not every year that a new park opens in America, I think this park would be on a smaller scale size, but would offer a very aggressive expansion plan. I can see this park opening with your typical rides that you'd find at your local park, like your carousel, bumper cars, rapids ride, flying eagles, and of course a scrambler. But I also think you'll see a star flyer, a Zamperla giant discovery, and an Intamin sky jump freefall ride, the tallest freefall ride in Texas. Located right next to the theme park, I think you see a medium sized water park that would be included with park emission to add another reason for park guests to visit the park over the other local competition. I predict this new theme park would be named Astor Road again, or something like that, to pay homage to the original park and open with five new roller coasters. The smallest one being a family gravity group wooden coaster. These smaller creations are a ton of fun. Then you see the park feature a Gerstlauer family coaster, something like Fire Chaser Express at Dollywood. And since everything is bigger in Texas, I think you see the park open the largest wooden coaster in the state, beating out SeaWorld San Antonio's Texas Stingray. This coaster would be built by RMC and feature a few inversions and of course, airtime. With the coaster topping out of a height of around 140 feet tall, this would easily become the best wooden coaster in all of Texas. And obviously the park would have to feature a launch coaster, so I think you can see a premier launch coaster opening here. Maybe something like Full Throttle at Six Flags Magic Mountain. A few inversions, forward and backwards launch segments, and some airtime. Now for the fifth coaster, and the park's largest and that would be a B&M wing coaster and become America's largest wing coaster when it opens. Plus, Texas isn't home to a B&M wing coaster, and we all know that one won't magically appear at the Six Flags parks. Though, I do think a wing coaster would be a great fit for SeaWorld San Antonio. I predict that you see this coaster feature a lift hill of 200 feet, so the park could classify this wing coaster as a hyper. And the rest of the coaster's layout feature multiple inversions, airtime hills, but like Thunderbird at Holiday World, and actually have the coaster feature some airtime. Oh, and you can't add a wing coaster and not add any of the near-miss elements, like how Dollywood did with Wild Eagle. If a park in Houston would feature the rides and roller coasters that I mentioned, then I really do think this type of park would strive in the Houston area. What do you think? What type of roller coasters and rides would you like to see at a park in the Houston area? Please let me know in the comments. Now, what theme park operator do I think would love to be in the Houston market? Well, simply put, Cedar Fair. Now, obviously, this company has never built a park from the ground up, and it's obvious that Cedar Fair is trying to grow their brand and business in Texas, since the company now owns two Slitterbahn parks in Texas. A wild thought? Yes, but at least it's a fun thought. This would give Cedar Fair more parks that are located in warmer climates, something that Six Flags has a nice sized advantage currently. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be safe, stay positive, and keep riding coasters.